What's the most important thing in the Zelda game to you? Is it the music, the overworld, the story, or the characters? Well, for us, it's the dungeons. So what we've done is we have got four people from all around the world to rank all 35 of the main 3D Zelda dungeons. That's in Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, and Skyward Sword. Before we get to this countdown, here are some disclaimers. Disclaimer number one. This is not a definitive list, nor is it a fact. It's only our opinions, and our opinions, just like anyone's, are all different. For example, something that I may have at number one might be last on Jason's, for example. Secondly, this is not really done by an average. We're going to be doing this by a point system. So for last place, 35th, you'll get zero points. First, all the way up, you'll be getting 34, making the maximum number of points 136. We'll also be doing various award categories such as best music, best item, best atmosphere, and so on. Final disclaimer is, bosses are not being taken into account here. That's a topic for another time. Before we start, I would like to introduce Jason, who will be commentating with me on this countdown. Thanks for inviting me. Got so excited for the list that I asked Warren to share his results, and he got it done within five minutes. He loves his dungeons. It took me a while though, didn't it? Well, that's right, Jason. They are of such a high quality that choosing between them is never going to be an easy task, no matter what. Well, I think we're all done talking here. We'll get right onto the list. For a dungeon to reach last, it's got to be one that we all dislike. In fact, this dungeon reached the bottom four in all of our lists. It was hard, it was frustrating, it was unfair at points, and the strict time limit made it even more painful. I think you know which one I'm talking about. Number 35, and our worst voted dungeon, is the Grey Bay Temple. I have a serious problem with navigation in general, but for some reason it's a lot more manageable with the water temple from Ocarina Tamba here. Ugh. I get lost in the temple, I lose track of which switches I press, and the time limit from Majora's Mask just didn't make it a smooth journey at all. Great for some Zelda players, but definitely not for me. And I agree. I mean, spatial awareness its never been my strong point, and although the time limit never bothered me, the music, the layout, and the frustration always did. And I've only completed Majora's Mask once, and what puts me off playing it again is mostly this. Well, this and that stupid trading sequence in the Kana Canyon. Number 34 is a beginner's dungeon, and even though it did nothing wrong, it's just simply not that advanced compared to the other dungeons on this list. So that's the only reason it's low, that's all. Let me just make something clear real quick. None of us absolutely hate the Zachary Tree from Ocarina of Time like we do with Great Bay, for example. But what we do agree on is that it's easy, boring, unoriginal, and was just improved upon in many ways through the game. The thing is, though, it had to be. It's the first dungeon in the first 3D Zelda game. It's supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be a tutorial. It's supposed to have a lot of talking. Although, that doesn't mean we can be lenient, because it's an introduction, which is why it says in number 34, as Jason said, the Deku Tree may be boring, but to be honest, it didn't really have a choice. The Great Deku Tree is fantastic for introducing what Ocarina of Time will bring to the table compared to the previous Zelda games. It uses the jump onto the spider web to introduce the third dimension. It's a basic dungeon with basic puzzles to ease the Zelda player in. And though it scored extremely low, remember that all of us have played Zelda several times. So a tutorial dungeon isn't that interesting to us who have played Zelda many times. Now we come to the dungeons where our opinions really begin to differ. But as I said, opinions are going to be different. That's what makes them opinions, and nobody's ever going to agree on everything. In fact, I may know a certain someone who may not be too happy about this placement. Number 33 is inside Jabu Jabu's belly. Really? I like that place. Goes to show that to each their own, I guess. From my side, I like the atmosphere and unique idea of being inside the stomach for a dungeon. The bubbles, the switches, the jellyfish, even Rudo, I admit, I didn't mind doing. And it stood out to me ever since I played it my first time. I guess some here have a harder time digesting it. I'm sorry Jason, but even bad jokes won't make me stomach this dungeon again. But don't worry, there are plenty more shocks for you later on, as there are for everyone else. As for me, 
I just dislike everything about this dungeon. I hated the music, I hated Ruto, I hated fighting that same enemy like about five times. I can see why it might appeal to someone, but for me, it just didn't work out. Huh, looks like I'm not the only one having a herd of cuckoos pecking at me. Looks like Jitin is thinking highly of this one, while the rest of us... Number 32 is Dragon Rouge Cavern from Wind Waker. First dungeons do have a bit of a habit of being a bit bland, or on the bland side, but Dragon Rouge Cavern doesn't do too bad a job, especially for a fire dungeon. The item, the grappling hook, was very good, and it was used in quite a few fun ways, although they didn't quite take it as far as I think they could have. I did, on the other hand, enjoy the indoor slash outdoor section idea, and I hope it does get used in future Zelda games to come. For me, the design didn't stand out to me, and it didn't help that it was a long dungeon. The grapple, while it was good, and I agree it was good, wasn't used too much in puzzles, and it became a little bit like a chore after a while in my opinion. Even when I played the demo to this game as a kid, I don't think I've ever been fond of this dungeon. I just look at the other Wind Waker dungeons, and I love those dungeons, but here, it's just a little too basic for my taste. Here we have the first ending dungeon on this list. It's always been a rule of thumb that final dungeons are more combat heavy than puzzle heavy, with the exception of the sky keep from Skyward Sword, and this one's no different. It's just a bit of a shame that the combat was among the worst in the game. How fitting that it's in my number 31 choice too, because Ganon's Tower from Wind Waker is also the general bottom 5 at number 31. Ah, couldn't ask for a better fit. There are only two noises that I hate hearing in the Zelda universe, and this dungeon has one of them. The staticky noises that come from the bosses in this dungeon are just... <sighs> On my side, I have a few extra and more specific things to say. First of all, the sword. I mean, are you serious? You fight that ghost scan thing about eight times consecutively, doing the same boring thing every time. When you defeat him for the first time, he disappears, dropping his sword, and you have no idea which of the many doors to go through. It turns out that the back of his sword points you in the right direction, so you go through that door and fight him again, and again, and again. If you figured that out without a guide, then well done, I never could. Secondly, the final bosses in this game were all amazing, but as they're not being taken into account in this countdown, Ganon's Tower from The Wind Waker sits at number 31. When making this list, we were all aware of one thing. There could be a tie. What happens if two dungeons average out to get the exact same number of points? Well, unfortunately for us, this did happen six times in fact. However, instead of picking one between us, we decided to keep it together as a joint pick. Therefore, there are two dungeons that ended up on exactly 40 points, and this is one of them. Our first tie, numbers 29 and 30. The first of the two is the Woodfall Temple from Majora's Mask. It's funny when I think back to this dungeon, I immediately think of the poisonous water and when I try to think of something else to strengthen my choice, I don't get anything. Like the other first temples, for me at least, the dungeon boss is really good, but considering the dungeon itself, it's not soaring for me. Yeah, I mean as you said Jason, the boss Odola was a lot of fun, however this dungeon also suffers from what I like to call first dungeon syndrome, it's simply too basic, too short, and didn't really have anything special going for it. Not only that, but the bow was used in almost no new ways whatsoever, and I personally hated Deku Link, which made the overall dungeon even more annoying. It's not horrible, but it wasn't exactly a magnet that pulled me towards finishing Majora's Mask. Ooh, ouch, number 8 on my list, but I can easily see how this dungeon will get tied on with three anchors by my friends and drag it down to the bottom of the well, so I don't mind. <laughs> My god do I hate this place. Repetitive gameplay, annoying escort puzzles, boring combat, to name but a few of this dungeon's many flaws. But I mean, if you do enjoy this dungeon, I can definitely see why it had many elements that some people do like. But for me, it just compiled everything I hated in video games into one dungeon. 
Transporting the balls around was incredibly frustrating in my opinion, and the Phantom Zant and Twilight Beast battles were the absolute bane of my existence throughout the entire game, and having them in a dungeon was just awful for me. But of course, each to their own, and your opinion is fine, and so is mine. This dungeon obviously is really special for me. It has probably my favorite atmospheric vibes from the game. That Zant's hand and orb puzzles was a really nice touch in making the dungeon stand out. I love how this is close to leading things up to Zant as a dungeon close to the end of the game. Though like Joe said, I can definitely see why some aren't a fan of it, but again, I don't mind. It's not a good dungeon for what it does wrong for some Zelda players, but for me, out of the four of us here, I like this dungeon. I thought it was really good.